While I was struggling to find a strong way to kick off this video, my mind kept going back to Wit Studio's recent history prior to Great Pretender. Best known as the team behind the stellar adaptation of Attack on Titan's first three seasons, I realized that I couldn't help but view them as THE Attack on Titan studio. Almost like one might view A1 Pictures as the Sword Art Online studio, or Shaft as the Monogatari studio. These statements are simplistic in that they don't encompass the entire body of work that A1 and Shaft puts out, but these studios are defined through a handful of shows that achieved widespread popularity. That was Wit Studio for the longest time, even when putting out other great anime from After the Rain to Vinland Saga. But when Mappa took up the daunting mantle of Attack on Titan from them, it signaled a new era for Wit. Gone was the obligation to push out more Attack on Titan with even higher expectations of quality, and in its place was the opportunity to chart a new course for the anime that it wanted to release moving forward. And with little hesitation, Great Pretender debuted mere weeks after Attack on Titan's final season dropped its trailer. Removed from the world of Titans, Great Pretender follows the life of Makoto Edamura, or Japan's greatest swindler as he calls himself, after he gets one-upped by Laurent Thierry a strangely charming con man. Dragged into the fray of a plot to scam a mafia boss with the cover of a filmmaker, Makoto finds himself caught in the ropes of multiple Robin Hood-esque schemes with Laurent and his associates, who claim to be neither friends nor confidants. The premise is delightfully simple, setting the stage for the stories to go in wild directions without straying too far from its roots, and the gorgeous visual design adds a playful dimension to the otherwise high-stakes heist that woo the eyes without fail. These are just a couple aspects of Great Pretender that make it special, and that alone makes the rest of it a treat to experience. In fact, Great Pretender doesn't need to show most of its cards to convince you that it'll take you on a global tour de force of gorgeous locales and exhilarating heights. That in itself lies its greatest strength. Hiding underneath the surface is a compelling bunch of well-rounded and diverse characters who are doing their best to navigate the persistent, often cruel difficulties of life. In that sense, the show's title, which pays homage to the Freddie Mercury song with the same name, takes on a whole new meaning. Once this video reaches its conclusion, I hope I can convince you that Great Pretender is a show that you need to watch. But I can't pretend to do that without focusing in on some of its greatest parts. So for those who care, there will be some minor character spoilers, but nothing that exposes the mystique that permeates Great Pretender's 23 episode run. For starters, it might be best to double down on how striking Great Pretender's aesthetic is because it's the first thing that any potential viewer browsing Netflix originals is going to see when it rolls over its preview. And for my case, it easily grabbed my attention. Great Pretender's backgrounds succeed in highlighting the beauty of its locales brimming with colorful vibrance no matter the time of day. Los Angeles is striking with its prominent landmarks set across the cooler skies and fluffy clouds, while its sunsets coat the city in a synthwave-like filter with a focus on showcasing a warm atmosphere to set the mood. The cell shading here is masterfully done, complementing the sharp character designs, architecture, and occasional uses of 3D CGI. From the very first episode, the unbelievable amount of thought dedicated to realizing Great Pretender's style resonates to the very end. Art director Yusuke Takeda and color designer Yuko Kobari deserve so much credit here for finding the perfect balance of color and atmosphere that the artists could execute upon. And as I mentioned before, the character designs of Great Pretender stand on nearly equal footing with its background art, which I personally found to be the strongest of the year. Yoshiyuki Sadamoto, the legendary character designer behind classics like Neon Genesis Evangelion and modern hits like Wolf Children, brought his A-game and delivered with one of his most colorful, diverse casts yet. His designs are overflowing with individuality that pop against their surroundings. And given that Great Pretender is a global adventure, we get to see people from a wide range of cultures and backgrounds populating the cityscapes. It's nothing short of refreshing, but it also allows the main cast to encounter an array of unfamiliar events and territories that bring out more dimensions of their personality. In this respect, there's no better time to bring up the stellar animation. Its aesthetic on its own is enough to carry the entire show, 
but it's further amplified with a keen attention to character detail. Of the main cast, Abby showcases a range of expressions outside of her typically cold temperament that were fun to watch while also befitting of her role as a con woman. Not to mention the thrilling action sequences bringing the heat in the show's most intense moments with plenty of cars and motorcycles abound for those enthusiasts. There's always something on the screen to catch your attention, and what's most impressive is that it holds up regardless of where you watch it. Out of curiosity, I tried watching Great Pretender on a phone and wow, I might have strained my neck, but it was still worth it in the end. For those looking for something that is visually distinct and polished, Great Pretender is no doubt a must watch. Of course, you can't just judge an anime by its cover, because there are hundreds of anime that have the best of both worlds in the visual and narrative departments. Fortunately, Great Pretender hits the bullseye with subtle and snappy character writing. Core appeal of the show lies with witnessing how Makoto and crew manage to pull the wool over their target's eyes in the face of unexpected obstacles. This is where Makoto or Edamame, Edamame. Edamame I'm gonna jumble you. comes in. He's the perfect audience surrogate despite his past experience with scamming, simply given how unpredictable of a mastermind Laurent is. Abby and Cynthia are accustomed to dealing with his shenanigans, but Edamame's clearly out of his league. And just as it takes time for him to grasp how these frauds work, the viewer's in the exact same boat as him. It also helps that Makoto's got a good heart. His confident exterior as Japan's greatest swindler is easily diminished from his empathetic nature and awkward temperament, born from an unfortunate backstory that unfolds as he becomes more entangled in each scheme. Of course, the entire main cast also gets the royal treatment, and I would argue that Cynthia is a particular standout whose story ties in perfectly with the events of the arc in London. This last point is important because it not only highlights Great Pretender's versatility, but its clever use of foreshadowing. To use an example, we are introduced to Abby as one of Eddie Casano's entourage of women. When Laurent gives her a fake drug branded Sakura Magic, she goes completely mad on an acrobatic spree until she crash lands into the pool. Without knowledge of Abby's past, it's simple to write this off as some beautiful Sakura- oh, Sakura? Oh no, it's definitely Sakura, that pulls the viewer in. But without spoiling too much, keeping note of Abby's character traits and actions in this scene will pay its dividends as you learn more about her. The same applies for its entire cast, where innocuous moments hold much greater meaning many episodes later. What makes this all the more impressive is that its lead writer, Ryota Kosowa, has almost no experience with animation. His resume includes a plethora of live-action films and series, kind of like the team behind the phenomenal X. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. But Kosawa easily makes up for this with his exhaustive work on stories about confidence men. And when asked in an interview with Anime News Network about the implications of Great Pretender releasing worldwide on Netflix, he expressed a desire to work in animation because, quote, I wanted viewers from all around the world to see my work without bias. It's a lovely sentiment, but also the perfect segue into Great Pretender's strength as a show with international scope. One of the perks associated with a Netflix release is that their shows are often created with the knowledge that millions of viewers will come across them regardless of their interest. That puts anime in a unique position to be seen by new audiences. In the past year alone, Netflix announced that over 100 million households checked out an anime at least once. Wit Studios seem conscious of this because Great Pretender feels global in several respects. Makoto and his crew are a globetrotting bunch, for starters, traveling from the sprawling city of Los Angeles to the modern tropics of Singapore. The visual style does wonders in realizing places we've become familiar with in other media, all while breathing fresh air into the story when it's most needed. Great Pretender also features numerous languages, even though most of the dialogue is in one, but the show takes half of the first episode to show what these characters sound like to each other before committing to a voice track. And even after that, we get to hear other languages like French spoken when it becomes relevant, adding another layer of authenticity to the show. This experience was also amplified by the phenomenal cast voicing this lovable bunch. For the record, I watched the English dub of Great Pretender, something I don't normally do because I'm a weeb and I actually hate the English language with a burning passion after having to listen and speak to it every single day of my life. This language has to be the worst thing. Shut 
Shut the hell up. You're so rough. Which is to say, Alan Lee, Aaron Phillips, Kassar Mohammed, and Laura Post were great across the board thanks to their charisma. But more importantly, Great Pretender is culturally and socially relevant. While the story is fictional, real-world events and economies are referenced that hold great implications for almost every character. Some are more subtle, such as how Makoto's employment prospects in Japan are stained from a criminal offense he accidentally stumbled into. Others are explicit in their subject matter that I would not dare spoil. Trust me when I say that it treads dark grounds that one might not expect given the high-octane energy of its trailers and characters. Now I've been heaping a bunch of praise on The Great Pretender for very good reason, but it might be fair to counteract that with some fair criticism. Yet even that's a bit of an ask for this video because I can't quite express those few frustrations without tiptoeing the fine line of spoilers. I will spoil the premise of the final case here, so skip to conclusion in the timestamp if you hope to go in blind. I'm not one of those people who believe that endings are always the most important sections of the story. Sometimes it's more about the journey than the outcome. If One Piece happened to end today with the revelation that the One Piece <coughs> never existed, I'd probably be a bit tilted, but it wouldn't detract from the memorable experiences that came before it. This is exactly how I feel about Great Pretender's final few episodes. In its attempt to wrap up the season in a nice package, its writing stumbles into questionable territories with the premise of its final case centering around a child trafficking organization. So the show's not at fault because it discusses child trafficking, it's rather that Makoto's character writing in this case is really messy to the point that you start to doubt his integrity and lose respect for him, even if he emerges a somewhat decent person by the end. It also tries to subvert expectations of the viewer in ways that come off as very half-baked and jarring. Not to mention it goes against a motto that runs counter to some of the things that actually happen in the show. Looking back at certain moments, I think I can see where the writers wanted to show more than tell, but there was enough ambiguity to certain situations that deserve the criticism that it's gotten online. I can't say that its ending ruined the show for me, because it still turned out to be a 2020 favorite alongside Kaguya-sama Season 2 and Keep Your Hands Off Eizouken, but it did leave a sour aftertaste that I had to come to terms with days after its credits rolled. I want to end this video on a bold statement. Great Pretender is one of the few anime that I can recommend to anyone with little reservation. And that even goes for people with little to no interest in animation. Even considering some of my strong reservations in its final episodes, it is rare to come across an anime that can hold such an appeal to a wide audience. A strong English dub draws in people averse to subtitles, but it's the sweeping adventure powerful visual design, and global perspective that I haven't seen from a modern anime in quite some time. And most importantly, Wit Studio assembled a great team of talented individuals that rose up to the occasion to set the tone for the studio's animated projects moving forward. Even as the curtain closed on Attack on Titan, Great Pretender inspires even more hope for a creative and ambitious future. That might be the true greatness of Great Pretender. And of course, it is why you should watch Great Pretender. So that was a fun ride. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. Please like it and subscribe to Sakamui if you had a good time, as it really does help the video get recognized and can hopefully draw more attention to this gem of a series. Also, feel free to comment your thoughts on Great Pretender and leave feedback on what you'd like to see me cover in the future. With that, I'm just going to hop over to Los Angeles to purchase some of this Sakura magic that I've been hearing about. See, I saw this girl go wild after having some, so I'm assuming that must be the best thing in the world. I'm willing to drop $10,000 on it just to get a taste of that Sojiro Sakura. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you all in the next video.